Hey sports card collectors and investors, how's everybody doing? It is the Sunday before the Sunday when football starts again. I can't say that I'm um, not fired up. I'm ready for the season to start, although I don't really know what to expect. We still haven't signed Alvin Kamara. Uh, for those that are new to the channel, I am a diehard New Orleans Saints fan. Uh, we've got the Bucks week one. We've got the, um, the dream team Bucks now with Tom Brady and the rest of the gang. Uh, so we'll see how we fare. We're going to be in the Superdome without any fans. I guess I can pump crowd noise up to like 70 decibels or something like that. Uh, the Superdome gets up to about 110 decibels. And so I don't think it's going to really be much as far as crowd noise compared to what it normally is. Uh, so it's going to be interesting to see you know, how the Saints can fare, especially when we haven't really heard much about training camp. There's been no preseason. I don't know. Does anyone know what to expect? No. I mean, nobody knows what to expect from this season. It's going to be, it's going to be kind of weird, but I am excited for football to start again. It's going to be awesome. We've got some NBA playoffs today. Um, you know, there's, it's just, it's good times. Good times. We're starting to get some sports back. And, and things are starting to roll. So today I've got a fun mail day. Um, it is just because we've got the NFL season coming up. We do have kind of a heavier focus on football cards. I am going to be uh, sitting down with Flipping Steve tomorrow night on the live stream to talk more about the upcoming NFL season. And then on Tuesday night, I'm sitting down with Brad at Comeback Card Investor. And then a couple of other guys, Boris at Hobby Box. And I cannot remember, I'm drawing a blank on his first name. Um, but Football Card Quest, I believe, is his channel. Uh, very good channel as well. I'm excited about that. And then Wednesday, I've got my fantasy football draft. And then Thursday, football starts. So it's all football next week. I am really pumped. My wife, not as pumped. Uh, not looking forward to me being completely out of out of the game um, every night next week for the most part. So, uh, but hey, let's roll into this mail day. I'm going to go ahead and get started. And what I did, so I've got some some vintage football here, and then I've also got some um, guys that I'm speculating on. And I want to kind of hear your thoughts on this, and I'll I'll explain kind of my thought process. So. There has been obviously a boost in football card prices leading up to the season. There's a lot of excitement. There's a lot of people that are, you know, kind of, um, you know, taking their fantasy football knowledge, applying it to football cards, and you can just see that with the sales and the pricing going up for certain players. And so, one thing that I that I looked at in this mail day is um, pass rushers. So. Historically, they have not gotten hobby love. Their pricing has not really moved at all. Even guys that have huge sack numbers. Last season, we had a lot of guys like that. Nick Bosa, his prices moved a little bit, but not really much. And he had a monster season. His team was in the Super Bowl. The guy was playing unbelievably. So I think that's going to be a big question mark going into this season is, you know, are certain guys like running backs, wide receivers going to continue to rise? They've really risen a lot over the last couple of months. And then what about defensive players? Are we, are we going to see defensive ends, pass rushers? Are we going to see cornerbacks? You know, and their prices go up. I'm, I'm intrigued. You know, so it's kind of a fun, it's a fun segment to, to speculate on for sure. And so I'm going to start it off with a young pass rusher that I think has a lot of upside, TJ Watt. Yeah, so this is obviously the younger brother of J.J. Watt. And in here, you can't really see, but I've got three optic rookie cards. These were three bucks a piece. Ten bucks total shipped is what it was. Um, with optic just being, you know, a very popular set, obviously. Uh, I wanted to just kind of, again, it's $10, so it's not, you know, there's not much out of pocket there. And I think that TJ Watt is going to continue to ascend. He's had big sack numbers over the last couple of years, and I see that continuing, assuming he doesn't get hurt. That's obviously what, you know, we worry about with a lot of these guys. It's just injuries are a lot more common in the NFL. And so I figured, hey, why not take, take a look at TJ Watt? All right, next up, I've got um, a couple of Christian McCaffrey cards. I got a couple of these season ticket contenders, these optic contenders. They wrote on a marker on the outside. It's not actually on the card. Uh, but this is a blue prism that's numbered out of 99. I picked up a couple of these. And these were, let's see, 12. so this one was $12 shipped. And that's second year Christian McCaffrey. And then I just got um, an optic, I believe this is an optic hollow second year second year optic hollow uh, for McCaffrey and it was eight bucks eight bucks shipped um, so you know my thought process behind McCaffrey is he's kind of that young guy if, I, if I'm making a, a comparison to basketball cards he's kind of the Luka Doncic of football right now 
He's the number one fantasy running back. He's the most exciting kind of, well, I shouldn't say most exciting running back, but he's a playmaker. He's a guy that can run between the tackles. He can catch screens out of the backfield, and he can take it 90 yards at, at any second. He's almost as good as Alvin Kamara for the Saints. <laughs> I'm joking for all you Panthers fans out there, all you fantasy nuts that are probably thinking I'm crazy, but I'm a homer with the Saints. But guys, Alvin Kamara went healthy. I don't think there's anybody better than him as far as being out in the open field and making plays. McCaffrey's a different type of back than Kamara is for sure, um, but uh, I, I like both of those guys. So obviously I was just kidding. But the thought is, is that Luka's second year pricing went way up. It went way up. I was buying, you know, optic. Um, I was buying optic cards of Luca at you know ten, twelve bucks, fifteen bucks, and Prism cards too. Prism, his Prism stuff was really inexpensive early on, and it's jumped considerably since. So this is kind of my, you know, my I guess zag on that is kind of like, hey, are, if these football cards are going to be like basketball, then maybe I should have some second year McCaffrey. So that that's the reason why I got those. I don't. I probably. I've got a couple more that are coming. I don't have 50 of those cards or anything, but I thought that would be kind of a fun, interesting, you know, um, play. All right, next up, I just got this one in. I love this card. So this is a Kamara Orange Prism. You know, I, I like Orange Prism a lot. It's numbered out of 275. I got it for 60 bucks shipped. And, you know, so what happened is I, I picked up a lot of his silver prisms that are not numbered, obviously. Um, and they were about 20 bucks when I was picking them up. Now they're in that 40, 50, maybe, oh, I guess 40 or $50 range. And the orange prism at 60 is numbered. And so I was thinking, well, that, that's, a good, that's a good value if that silver prism is, is trending up at that 40 or $50 range. And again, if we can actually get the guy signed and he is playing, Alvin Kamara when healthy is... He's a beast. I mean, he is a lot to handle. And so I still haven't seen you know, a contract come through, so we'll see how that goes. But um, you know, that is kind of my thoughts on the Alvin Kamara stuff. And I picked up, I picked up quite a few of the Silver Prisms. At $20, I felt like just not very much risk you know, with it being 20 bucks each. All right, major zag coming up on the next card. So actually, I'm going to shout out to one of my subscribers, Drake. Um, and he's going to know exactly what I'm talking about because he's also a Saints fan. So the big zag on pass rushers, Marcus Davenport rookies. All right, so most people might not even, if you're a casual watcher of football, you might not even know who I'm talking about. This is a guy that we traded up. We traded two first round picks to get up and draft Marcus Davenport because we needed a pass rusher opposite of Cameron Jordan. For the longest time, teams would double up on Cameron Jordan and we just were not getting to the quarterback and they would eat our defense alive. So we were like, look, now, what's funny is if you look back at the draft, so if you go back, I think this was the, what, the 18 draft? Yeah, I think this was the 2018 draft. So when we trade up, we, we move up from 24 to 16 or 27 to 14 or something like that, and all of the analysts are saying that we're getting Lamar Jackson. We're drafting Lamar Jackson. That's who the Saints want. It's gonna be the heir apparent, uh, or that's gonna be the, the next in line after Drew Brees. And no, we don't get Lamar Jackson, we get Marvis Davenport. So I look back at that and now I see Lamar, what Lamar Jackson is doing. Now granted, I love Breeze, he's our guy. Um, you know, He won us a Super Bowl as a, as a 30 plus year Saints fan. Anybody that wins you a Super Bowl, you are loyal to them. So um, that, that's my thoughts on that. But just think of the Saints had, had drafted up and gotten Lamar Jackson, because really Marcus Davenport, he's been a good player, but he's been injured. If he could stay on the field, the guy is an absolute monster, but he just hasn't been able to stay on the field, whereas Lamar Jackson's doing his thing. So, oh, what can you do? What, just think about the possibilities. And, and, but, you know, with, with any draft, you can look and, and say the same thing. So, I mean, there's talk. We almost got the, the, the previous year when we got Lattimore at 11, we were very close, uh, Sean Payton said, to picking Patrick Mahomes. Patrick, so the Chiefs traded up to 10 to get Patrick Mahomes. And Sean Payton has said if Mahomes was sitting there at 11, they would have drafted Mahomes. Again, if you think about, I mean, I'm thinking about that, it gives me chills, thinking about Mahomes as a saint, but it'll never happen. The guy's going to retire in Kansas City. They will never let him leave, and I, don't, and I don't blame him. So anyway, going back to the Zag, Marcus Davenport, these are, are Optic Aqua, numbered out of 299, all right? These were $2 each shipped. I don't even know. I think these were more to ship than the actual cards were. But I'm just thinking like, look, there's no real, I mean, I could lose the $2, I guess. And then here's the, the next cards that I got. Again, just because he hasn't been on the field, he's not on anybody's radar. Here's a Prism Silver Auto. 
and I got and I have two of these they were five dollars each five dollars each actually with shipping seven dollars each Wild. So, I mean, it's obviously we're prospecting here. Okay. So these are, there's low prices for a reason. He hasn't done a lot, you know, so, but cause he's been injured. But if the guy comes in and does his thing, this is a red prism. Is that one what this one is? I believe it's, yeah. Uh, red wave, red wave. It's numbered out of 149. This was $9 shipped. So again, not a lot of, not a lot of risk there. Um, I probably put in, if you add it all up, it's probably $50 I ha have in on Marcus Davenport rookie cards. But I'm just so intrigued because if pass rushers do get a boost, you know, if Marcus Davenport does have a, a season, you know, a good season, then hey, who knows? Who knows? So I, th that's just kind of a fun prospecting thing I'm doing. And because I'm a Saints fan, I'm just well aware. I'm, I'm, I'm in tune with that player in particular. I've been following it. Uh, so I'm, you know, I'm just very curious if he has, if he has the breakout season, that everyone needs him to have, you know, then that's, that's where I could maybe see a return on those, but it's just fun. That's fun. All right. Next up, we're going to the, some of the big dogs here. This is one I was really excited about getting. This is a 1994 Marshall Falk, uh, foil SP rookie card in a PSA 10. I got this one for $225 shipped and a big reason, another reason why, I, I mean, I would like to have more of these ideally. I don't know if I'm, the prices have gone up. I've noticed I have tried to buy a second and the prices have been rising uh, since I got this one. And I don't know if, you know, I don't know where it's going to go from here, but this is a tough card to grade because it's foil. If you can see on the, if you can kind of see without the glare there, I mean, so it's not easy to get tens on these. And I believe the pop for this one is about 500 for this PSA 10. So even though it's a 94 and it's within kind of that junk wax era, sort of, it's it's not an easy card to grade. So I'm, I'm fairly confident there's not going to be 10,000 of these. Uh, I just, I don't think that there ever will be. Even if they did print a lot of them, I don't see that happening. Uh, so I was excited to, to pick that one up. Next up, we're going with an all-timer here. 86 tops Bruce Smith rookie card in a PSA 9. I got this one for $95, tax tag and title. Um, I, I love the 86 top stuff. You can see, obviously, I've got the, the Jerry Rice rookie card painting back there. But uh, Bruce Smith is the all-time sack leader. And there's nobody that's active that's really close to him that, that I've seen. Reggie White is second. Um, he was about 10 sacks behind Bruce. But there's nobody that is very close to Bruce Smith right now. So I look at him. Obviously, he's a Hall of Famer. He went to four Super Bowls with the Bills. Um, all-time, he's, I mean, he's up there with LT as far as you know, best defensive players of all time. He's an absolute beast, so I was happy to get that one. All right, 72 tops Terry Bradshaw. This is in a PSA 7. This is second year Terry Bradshaw. So the Terry Bradshaw rookie is in 1971 tops, and I paid $90 for this one shipped. Again, this was one where I just, I really like the look of the card. It is a PSA 7. As I look at it, I mean, the centering is really good. I'm not sure where there might be, you know, maybe, I mean, the corners look good to me too. Um, it's just a great looking seven, which I'm buying this on eBay. So I'm just kind of looking, I'm trying to zoom in and look at it. So I didn't really know exactly what I was going to be getting, but I love this one. Um, and I, I'm just happy to kind of add more of these vintage football. Bradshaw, again, he's an all time Steelers uh, QB. He's probably the, the best Steelers QB of all time. I believe he's got three Super Bowl rings. Um, the, the Steelers were dominant in the 70s, and so I'm, I'm excited to have this one. All right, last but not least, a guy that's probably not on too many uh, people's radar, and thankfully, that's, that's you know, I'm happy about it. Um, and this is a Phil Sims 1980 Tops rookie card. So what happened was, this is kind of funny, uh, this, this eBay seller, I bought a PSA 8. Now, what's wrong with this picture? Obviously, this is not a PSA case. It's a Beckett case. Uh, they sent me a Beckett 8, and this was $29, okay, the PSA 8. So they, I, I sent a picture of it back, and I said, hey, sorry, guys, but I hate to bug you, but I, I bought the PSA 8. You sent me the wrong one, and they said, oh, sorry about that. Send, it, send this back, and we'll, we'll replace it for you. And I said, actually, can I just buy the PSA 8 for 20 bucks? Because they had the PS, I bought the I bought the PSA 8 for 29 and then they sent me this, so I was like, "Hey, that's kind of an even, you know, somewhat even there um, for twenty dollars." Can I have the PSA eight? So they are going to send me. They agreed to that. They're sending me the PSA eight. Phil Simms, um, an all-time great Giants quarterback. He's a Super Bowl winner, and I believe that he has the record, or maybe it was Breeze that broke his Super Bowl record of uh, completion percentage in the Super Bowl. 
Um, but Phil Simms is an all-time great. You know, I mean, he played for the Giants, um, and you know, for Giants fans, Phil Simms is he's a le- he's a legend. He's up there. So um, I was happy to get this. Um, and again, it's twenty twenty-five dollars. It's about the cost of the the grade. You know, and it's a nineteen. It's eighty tops. This is a forty-year-old card uh, and an eight. So. Um, really happy to get these guys. What do you think? Are you buying football? Um, you know, what are your thoughts on football cards in general? Football cards were my first love as a kid, so I'm happy to see the hobby kind of coming around to football cards. And I'm gonna. I think that vintage football is going to be a heavy focus for me uh, moving forward. I'm still gonna, you know, still gonna prospect and do things in basketball and soccer and and some different stuff here and there. But um, as I look at those those you know vintage football cards. It just brings back a lot of memories, and it's it's been fun. So anyway, guys, subscribe if you haven't already. We've got over 200 videos on the channel. We're creeping up to 2,700 subscribers. If you haven't subscribed yet, get on board, guys. We're coming out with daily videos, and we are having a blast doing it. Thanks very much. We'll talk to you later.